Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where and when you are watching this newscast. Welcome to This is the Week That Was in Virtualization Cloud and EUC, coming to you from the Virtualization Practice. My name is Tom Howarth, and this is the latest episode of what is hopefully a weekly video news roundup. This week, Conference Landed again had a week-long hiatus, so there's nothing to regale you with here. So, what was the news of the week? In the Citrix world, Investor Group Alliot Management Corporation, the other EMC, has managed to effect a change in leadership. Mark Templeton has announced his retirement after over 20 years at the helm. Love Mark or hate him, and there are very few who do actually hate him, he has held a pivotal role in keeping Citrix as a company relevant in a post-virtualization world. Yes, he's made a couple of mistakes along the way. Arguably, the purchase of ZenSource was one. A move made too late in the market to be viable, but aside from that, he's been a good hand at the tiller. One thing that worries me from a long-term perspective is the announcement that Elliot now have a seat on the board. The company has named Jesse Cohen, Elliot's Head of Invest- Activist Investments, the board of directors, and they're going to add another, mutually agreed upon, board member later. The appointment makes Mr Cohen's first stint as a board of a, on the board of a publicly held company. That in itself is a worrying item and full of risk. As a result, Citrix have announced a review of operations by forming a board-level committee under the leadership of newly announced Executive Chairman Robert Calderoni. Mr Calderoni is also leading the committee to search for Mr Templeton's successor as CEO. This in itself is not a worrying aspect, but what is, is the fact that on both of these committees will be Mr Cohen and that as now yet to be unannounced second, Elliot approved board member. This does not bode well for a status quo or a status quo focused CEO, but with one with more with an agenda more aligned to Elliot's than Mark's. Therefore, expect a fire sale of the networking team, the closure of the research and development departments, divestiture of GoTo, and a single product company. Even as this was announced, Citrix reported better than expected quarter results. For a more in-depth view of this announcement, please read Joe Harder's post, Citrix, out with Mark T and in with Elliot S. Management. On the same day as Citrix management change, Microsoft, their long-term ally, announced a general availability of the latest desktop operating system, Windows 10. Now where is Windows 9, I hear you all say? Who knows, but maybe this image could help. It seems that Microsoft have never been any good at counting. What is interesting about this is it appears that it is no longer the primary focus of Microsoft as a company. This and all future desktop operating systems will be free, in the same way that OXX is from Apple. That said, there are a few more interesting features. We have our start menu back by default. Yay! And if you're running Windows 10 on a Surface device and you remove your keyboard, it will automatically morph into a tile-based touch display. A pretty nice move. And now, if they'd have thought of that in Windows 8, there may not have been such a rabid backlash against it. There now appears to be three ways to do everything. Mouse, keyboard shortcut and touch. Now, all that said, there are some seriously worrying issues surrounding Microsoft Desktop Services at Paradigm. Hot fixes are automatically applied whether you want them or not. Yes, you can defer them, but they will be applied. Also, in a Windows domain environment, it appears the upgrade is mandatory, unless you are running a Wussel server. This is contrary to what Microsoft has stated on their website. Now, this is not really bad, but not all corporate applications currently work on Windows 10. Another area of worry is Wi-Fi Sense, a feature that kindly shares your Wi-Fi key with all your friends to enable them to automatically connect to your Wi-Fi when they're at your home. Quite a nice feature. Apart from the fact that Microsoft believes that your friends include anybody in your Outlook stroke Hotmail contacts or Skype, including the Facebook opt-in ones. For a more in-depth look at this release, please have a read of my post on the virtualization practice. In another Alliot versus the company battle, the question of whether EMC will buy VMware back into 100% ownership took a rather unusual twist this week, with rumours of a reverse buyout being made. This is where VMware would actually buy out EMC rather than the other way round. That said, either option would cause 
issues. For example, if EMC bought back Microsoft's, sorry, if EMC bought back the public 20% to make it 100% private with EMC, how would that affect VMware's relationship with its other partners, HP, for example, or Dell, from a storage perspective? What would happen to vSAM? The product effectively competes with EMC storage divisions. Would Evo Rail and Evo Rack be shelved? Not a bad idea as they do not seem to be making the numbers desired. But I think more interestingly would be the opposite what VMware bought out EMC. Joking aside, would Galsinger become Tucky's boss? More interest more importantly, I feel it will send a message out to that VMware is the more important partner and the more dominant brand. It would also add heat to the furnace that this is the death of legacy storage. How would it interact or affect their interaction with their partners? I feel it would be a lot less problematical than if EMC bought VMware. Yes, VMware will be selling storage, but it would be easy to manage cooperation with partners via the current message of co-ompetition. Stupid word, but it actually does say what you mean. There will still be other issues. VCE would sell VBlock rather than Evo-based rail solutions, for example. That said, with the decline of NetApp, I feel that we are seeing the slow decline of the storage industry if we've known it. Software is now king, and hardware is only an adjunct to it. Okay, let's move on to news from our sponsors. It's a quiet week regards renews from our sponsors. They are most likely holding out on any major announcement until VMworld. But first, before I get into the news, I would like to welcome two new virtualization practice sponsors, Vivid Cortex and Cyos. Cyos offer virt machine learning analytics to optimize a VMware environment, and Vivid Cortex offer advanced analytics for open source databases. So, here are a few snippets of what has happened out in the, our sponsor world. Eternity of a game being included in the Gartner Girl Cool Vendors in Vendor Management 2015 report for a second time. Atlantis Computing have a new global VP in sales in the form of Tim Hoyt. He brings over 20 years of sales experience to the team from the likes of Sky Scarer and on into Western Digital Post Acquisition and before that Brocade. Server have expanded their SDI control solutions to be able to support NetApp storage solutions. This builds upon their already oppressive array of vendor support, which includes HDS, EMC, Fujitsu, and IBM. 